I'm Alan, and this is Alan's Firearms and Guns Plus More, and today, a very minute little piece called the Taurus TCP380. This is one of my favorite guns. I say one of because it used to be my favorite of the small 380s, at least ones that I felt comfortable recommending to people. It has a very nice trigger pull. It's a double action assist. So yes, it's a double action. You pull the trigger and it pulls the hammer back, but you first need to rack the slide before the action is engaged. And then it is double action but you only get that one shot on the pull. Of course, after that, it would work like a semi-automatic and it would, the, the assist would go into action when the slide goes into return. The 380 is a formidable round. A lot of people snicker at it, but a 380 is actually a nine millimeter. It's a nine millimeter short, nine by 17, nine millimeter in Makarov, nine by 18, nine millimeter in Luger, nine by 19. So there is about an eighth of an inch difference between the 9x19 and the 9x17. This is the 9x17. In Europe, it's called a Browning 9 or a 9mm short, and there is a German or uh, another name, 9mm Kreux or Crox, or I can't, I never can remember that name for some reason. And it's not important enough for me to commit it to memory. Sorry. For a concealed carry weapon, this is great. You can. It, it easily goes into a pocket holster and into your pocket. It's easily put into your waistband holster and put in your waistband. They used to sell this with a little carry pouch that you put in an upside down. It looks like a, a camera case. You pop the top, you push a hole in the bottom, and it comes right out into your hand like that. They don't ship it like that anymore. I think it was a cost cutting maneuver. But you can get those cases. People sell them separately now online. I like this little gun. It has the smoothest and easiest trigger pull out on the market. It's got one of the lightest springs on the market. The only thing that's lighter than this is that Remington RM380. To me, best bang for your buck on the market is of these small little guns. It blows away the Smith & Wesson bodyguard. It blows away most of the other guns. Yes, I know, it's a Taurus, and a lot of people have an issue with Taurus. I don't. I think they make a pretty good product. They sell so many guns that, of course, since they sell so many guns, they're going to get more complaints than anyone else. But the percentages of complaints are about even with all the rest of the gun companies, for the most part. So, without any further ado, let's take it to the workbench, field strip it, clean it, and reassemble. Welcome to the workbench and the Taurus 738 TCP. TCP stands for Taurus Compact Pistol. Let's open the box. This is how it comes. Manual, NRA, and warranty card. The pistol comes wrapped in this plastic bag. Second magazine with a finger extension and the little Taurus keys. The Taurus itself Nicely fitted gun. I like this little guy. Let's make sure it's empty where you remove the six round magazine, which it comes with two of. Check the chamber, check the magwell, and release it. Now this one is blackened stainless steel, so it's complete stainless steel. It's made three ways. It's made blackened metal, blackened stainless steel, and then raw stainless steel, or brush stainless. The brush stainless has the nicest look, but a lot of people like their guns blackened because of reflectability. I think that's a bunch of hooey. Um, having the stainless blackened makes some people more comfortable, but of course you always stand the chance that the finish is going to wear quicker or scratch because stainless doesn't hold up, hold on to finishes very well. There isn't a lot to talk about the outside of this gun, so let's get right into breaking it down and so let me tell you a little bit about some of the features. It has a slight finger extension, which still doesn't give you anything for your pinky. Self-defense, it don't matter. Okay, it does lock open on the last round, and it does have a thumb release. It's a great little pocket pistol. It has a loaded chamber indicator. Sights on it, it really doesn't have sights. Um, it's Really, there's a little nub on the front and two nubs in the back. Like I said, again, it's a pocket pistol, belly gun, 
not meant to shoot at long range. Though they are pretty accurate and has a really nice trigger pull. Let's take this puppy apart. So to take this apart, we're going to put the slide into the slide lock position. The easiest way to do that is leave the magazine in, then dump the magazine after it's back. And then what you have to do is you have to pull this pin up. Now I'm not going to try to do it with my fingernail because I think I'll just lose my fingernail. Okay, so what I'm going to do to get this pin out is I'm going to take a knife. Okay, so I'm just going to take this little knife and I'm going to push that just like that. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to put it right underneath that pin and lift it straight up. Just like that. Now, just like the Keltec, there is a little spring in here. And it's a, it's, a, it's a spring rod that goes straight across the bottom, near the bottom of this. So when we put this back in, you're gonna put it in like this at an angle and tilt it up. I'll show you this way. And tilt it up, that way you're, you're, you're taking the shell, just say the stick is the spring, you're going in like this so you can push it down and over it. Okay, that's when we put it back together again. So now we remove the slide. You don't have to pull the trigger. I'm going to lift this up, the spring rod, take that out. Remove, move the barrel forward and it comes out. And here we go, totally complete. This has a full length guide rod on the frame, which is a nice feature. I'm going to take some strike hole to do my cleaning with. If you want to know more about this product, refer to my video. In the meantime, all you got to know is if I, if you have this, you don't need to lube it. You use it to clean it and it lubes, it, it cleans, it lubes and protects. But I'll show you how to lube it in case you guys are using the old fashioned cleaning, uh, cleaning solutions that only do one thing. Now I'm going to wipe down the inside of the gun. I'll tell you, I don't know why anyone uses those old solutions. They're deterious to the gun itself. And unless you have really heavy leading, I don't understand why you would use it. Okay, so I'm going to wipe down basically where I can get everything with my fingers. Now, this is a new gun and it's pretty filthy because there's all new guns have metal filings in there and all sorts of stuff. I'm going to take this on this stick, I'm going to go and I'm going to clean this, these slots that are on each side of the slide. You want to make sure they're done really well, both cleaning and lubrication. This is the only place that really needs lubrication on the firearm, is where metal touches metal. Okay, I'm going to get rid of my little stick and go to my medium stick. I'm going to get in here really good. Okay, get into the front of the barrel, get into this little hole here. Okay, done with the slide. With the slide. Now I'm going to take my cloth and I'm going to go up and down the slide rails on the frame. Okay, get the tops of them, the sides of them, get underneath inside the slot. Take this off, wipe down all the metal gun doesn't have a lot of metal. Okay, get the hammer. Now let's work on the barrel. The whole outside of the barrel, nice stainless steel barrel. Good looking barrel. Make sure I get the locking lug, the cam lug clean. Particular attention on the feed ramps, the upper and the lower. I'm going to take this and I'm going to get the insides. Make sure my chamber is really clean, very important. After I do that, I'm going to run four brush down the barrel, make sure it's cleaned out really nicely. 
It's two springs, an inner and an outer. You're going to clean off both springs. Now I'm doing this quickly. You're going to take your time and you're going to make sure your gun is clean. Actually, this is a brand new gun, so the only thing that's come, I'm just getting metal filings from the machining off of here and uh, the original grease they use in the factory. And then, of course, your magaz magazine. Now, one of the things I like to do with when it comes to the magazine is I like to take the stick and go up underneath the feeding fingers of the magazine. Okay, let's get this pin. Okay, now this is strike hold I'm using, so I'm going to wipe the whole outside of the gun with this because this is a lubricant and protectant. And a lot of people are going to be touching this gun because it's in my shop. I do this to every gun that comes into my place. Protects it from fingerprints and all that. Okay. If you don't have strike hold, what you would do in that case is wipe it down with gun cleaner. Then you an oil on a cloth, wipe it down to deactivate the gun cleaner, and then wax the outside of the gun. Okay. So now to oil this. And you need to oil the gun if you've used a, a regular cleaning product like Hoppies. If you haven't, if you use Strikehold, you're done. Or a similar product to Strikehold, you'd be done. So three drops of oil on your cloth. I'm going to put it on the stick. And the first thing I want to do with the fresh oil, while it's still very oily, is just hit the slide, the rails, just, just hit the slots inside the slide. Just a couple of times up and down. On each side. Now this is really the only place that actually needs lubrication. The slide slots and the, the slide rails on the frame. But to deactivate the cleaner, which you must do, you must wipe down all the metal that you touched with cleaner because the cleaner, even after you wipe it off, use the stick to get into these tight spots, even after you, you wipe off the cleaner, there's a residue on there that keeps cleaning. So it's eating away at your finish and the other parts of the other metal parts. And if it's on your polymer, you ever see those white stains on polymer? That's what causes it. So if you get on, anywhere you get on the polymer, you got to hit it with oil. So I just used up the oil on that slide. I'm going to take a fresh cloth. I also ripped the cloth on part of the gun. Three drops of oil. Put it on my stick. Go up and down the slide. Rails on the frame. Both sides. Hit the top of them. So this is where you're getting metal to metal contact. So that's where you really need lubrication. The rest of the gun, you're just going to wipe down to deactivate the cleaner. And if you cleaned, and if, I didn't show you this before, but you go up and down inside the magwell with cleaner and then you repeat it with oil. This is a new gun, so I'm not so worried about Okay, now the barrel, you wipe the outside of the barrel down for the same reasons. Make sure you get your ramps. I'm going to put some oil, make sure I get the inside of the chamber. Then I'm going to take that oily rag and push it right down and out the other side of the, this rag has now has a hole in it. These sticks for some reason are these, these patches, cheap patches, so they keep falling apart on me. I have some new ones on order from a better company. So I'm just gonna push the, this down the barrel, 
with a thicker rod. Make sure I get positive touch. Turn it, push it down. There we go. The guide rod, because it's metal. Even if it wasn't metal, you'd do it if you cleaned it. The springs. Pin. Magazine. Get underneath those feeder fingers. That's it. Time to put this puppy back together again. So we're going to do exactly the opposite that, that we did. Put the little spring on. Put the big spring on. Put that down. Take my barrel. Put it in the slide. Now this is strange. They put you have to drop it in just at the front, just like that. Otherwise, you can get, for some reason, it gets hung up. Put it back. Put this in here. This looks like a nail with no point on it. The head of the nail faces away from the front of the gun. And then that goes in the little hole in the front. Push this forward, down in. Line up this, this rails on the slide and the frame. Pull this back, lock it up, look down the hole, make sure your barrel lug, the hole in the barrel lug is lined up with this hole. Put the pin in, I'm going to put, do this at an angle, put the pin in at an angle and that will push that spring lock down and then you can just push in the pin. Okay, let's do a function check. Slide lock works and trigger works. There you go. I'm finding it a little bit easier to throw this down so maybe it had to break in a little bit um, because I, but I've had that issue with a couple of these. I've sold hundreds of them. Only a few give you that problem. Yeah, it's breaking in. You do that, I'm sure, even those, if you, whoever owned them after they did that a few times, it worked out for them. So that's it, the Taurus 738 TCP. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. Until next time. Please like and subscribe. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time.